Hey, what's up guys? Fabio here once again, and I want to welcome everybody back to another video. Um, I know I got a haircut and a shave, but it's still me. Don't worry. <laughs> and uh, today we're continuing on the 31 days of Fabaween, which I think from now on in October, I'll call it that. I just like the sound of it, and it's kind of funny. And um, as I said uh, through the previous videos, um, in addition, like, like I, I got a lot of paid requests to get to, um, again, Leon Woodworth sent me a, a couple more franchises for me to review and I will get to those, but in between, like always, I want to do some other videos and reviews for the month of October for Halloween. Um, so I figured this, you know, this is really the first time that I've done this, um, you know, in previous years like i think uh it wasn't last year but the year before i reviewed like friday the 13th and nightmare on elm street um i think last year i did a couple didn't have as nearly as much time as i do now um to do videos because work was a nightmare then um but i figured you know dig into the vault so to speak a little bit and pick out some movies or some other, you know, horror Halloween related stuff that I've never covered on the channel that I've always wanted to. And today I'm actually going to review one of my favorites, one of my favorite 80s horror movies. Um, you know, this is a cult classic, like a lot of them. Uh, I do think it's a little bit underrated, but today I'm going to be talking about Night of the Comet. This is the uh, Screen Factory, Shout Factory, whatever factory you want to call it, Blu-ray. Got the awesome slipcover on here. Absolutely love this artwork and I do highly recommend this Blu-ray if you don't have it uh, pick this one up not only is the movie uh, I don't think it's in 2k but it is cleaned up it is remastered and um, there is some good features on here and again this movie if you've never seen this you need to check this one out it is just so fun it is a, an 80s classic in my opinion it's definitely an 80s cult classic and this never gets old in my opinion I never get tired of watching this one and I always run it uh, throughout Halloween um, every year because this movie is great, you know. So before I go any further, um, if anybody would like to help contribute to the channel by sending in a paid request, you may do so down below in the description box. There is a link to my PayPal account. No amount is too big. No amount is too small. It does not have to be just a movie review. It could be a TV series, a video game, a comic book, a cartoon, music um if you guys want to see a certain thing in my collection which i keep forgetting to mention that um a commentary a rant a random video whatever you know the uh, the sky's kind of the limit with the with the pay request so whatever you guys want to see me cover send it in i will get to it as soon as i possibly can and for those that have sent them in before i greatly appreciate it it means that you guys actually care about what I say and do here on the channel, and you want to see me do different things. So, appreciate it, guys. I've had a lot of fun. It's been interesting so far, and let's keep it going. But for now, we're going to talk about Night of the Comet. Now, this movie came out in 1984. 1984 was a really big year for movies. Not only did you have this, but you had the first Nightmare on Elm Street, you had The Terminator, uh, you had Missing in Action with Chuck Norris, uh, so on and so forth. There were many great movies that came out in 1984. And I've always felt that this one's a little underrated, um, but it does have a cult status. And I mean, that's a good thing. That's definitely not a bad thing. And it's, I don't know what it is about the 80s, but it seems like the 80s movies definitely have the most cult classics in it, which is why I think the 80s was the best decade for movies, in my opinion. Um, but a lot of, I think the majority of uh, 80s movies, particularly the genre titles like the action and the horror and the sci-fi, those are the ones that are really the cult classics. Even comedy. There was a lot of 80s comedies that have since gone on to become cult classics. And this movie is no exception. So the best way to describe this movie is definitely how it's written on the back of the Blu-ray. It says Night of the Living Dead meets Valley Girl. Totally agree with that. This movie is definitely a product of the 80s. It's a product of the time, which works for the movie. Um, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it does. Um, and speaking of Chuck Norris, I just now realized that Shannon Farrell, who played 
Chuck Norris's wife, ex-wife, and Lone Wolf McQuaid is actually the stepmom in this movie. I just now realized that. Holy shit. It's, her name is written on the back. I'm, I'm a doofus. <laughs> this is why I review these things so I can remember. Um, but, you know, some movies it doesn't work if it's a product of the time. Some movies it does. This one, it definitely does. This reeks of the 80s. In L.A. in the 80s. So, before I go, I might as well just get the plot out of the way. So, the plot of this movie is, um, I want to say, like, it is, this is a Christmas movie. It is. Um, but I'm not sure, like, specifically when in December it's set. So, it's about these two sisters who were played by Catherine Mary Stewart, who was in The Last Starfighter, which came out the same year as this, another 80s cult classic, and Kelly Maroney. Now, Kelly Maroney was in Chopping Mall, which came out a couple years later. She was in Fast Times at Ridgemont High, which came out a couple years before, and she was in a bunch of these type of movies back in the day. And then the lead guy, the final guy, is actually Robert, Robert Beltran, again, Lone Wolf McQuaid, uh, he was on Star Trek Voyager, he's been in a lot of other stuff over the years. So, uh, this comet is actually about to pass Earth, and it's a big deal, people are having block parties and all this crazy stuff, and um, it does hit Earth, and it turns everybody into zombies, except... Catherine Mary Stewart, Kelly Maroney, and Robert Beltran's character because they were inside of a room and therefore they didn't witness the comet. So everyone turns into either uh, dust or a zombie. And the rest of the movie is them trying to figure out what the hell is going on and what they can do. So what's the first thing that they do? Being young ladies in the 80s in LA, they go to the mall. So they end up going to the mall. They run into... Uh, these guys that used to work there that have all become zombies, which is the best part of the movie, in my opinion. And it has the, the the bad guy, one of the bad guys, the leader of the gang in there has the best line of the movie, which we'll get to. And then the scientists show up because they intercept a radio transmission because one of the other places that they go is a radio station. Now, Robert Beltran's character is a truck driver. He's on his way home to go see his family. He ends up going to this radio station and they start to band together so the scientists show up uh they tell them what's going on what happened with the comet they're starting to become zombies as well so the girls have to go in and they find these kids there they save the kids they get out and they start finding other survivors and try to move on in life um and that's the plot of the movie and again this movie is a classic and you ask anybody that has ever seen this they will probably agree. If they don't, they don't know what they're talking about. Um, but Night of the Comet is just a really fun movie. Uh, I grew up with this movie. Sci-Fi Channel and Showtime used to run this a lot. So growing up, this movie was always on TV, whether it was on cable or it was on the movie channels. I always used to watch this. And another movie, which I will be reviewing later in the month, that also has Night of the as the first three words in the title, but the last word is Creeps. So you can look forward to that. That was another classic, cable classic that I grew up on. Um, but this movie was always on as a kid. And I always, anytime it was on and I wasn't doing anything, I used to watch it. Um, unfortunately, cable and movie channels aren't what they used to be. You know, I think we can all agree with that. And they don't really run these movies as much as they used to. Occasionally, they will pop up. But they don't run these type of movies anymore. Um, they're part of a bygone era. And I really do miss that era. I think all of us that grew up in that era miss it. But anytime this was on, I used to watch it. And I still watch it again every October. This is another one. I don't know what it is about these. All the ones that I watch around Halloween, whether it's horror or sci-fi or Halloween related, I need to watch them more often. Because in this house, we celebrate Halloween every day. OK, <laughs> um, but this is definitely one that I need to spend more throughout the year because it's a classic, never gets old. Uh, but yeah, this is a movie that was just constantly on when I was a kid and I would just always watch it. Now, the sci fi channel version edits a little bit out, but the Showtime version was uncut, which had the best line. And we'll get to that in a little while. 
But th again, this movie is a product of the 80s. It's Valley Girl meets Night of the Living Dead. So you have the the shopping mall is a central part of the film, which I love. So it definitely has that Dawn of the Dead influence in there. Uh, because the, they go and they hang out at the mall. They're shooting machine guns in the parking lot, which is awesome. Daddy would have gotten us Uzis. Uh, one of one of my favorite lines in the movie because as you can see on the cover, uh, they got Mac tens, um, not Uzis. But you know, again, Daddy would have gotten us Uzis, which is just come on, it's eighties. Why not? Um, I want a Uzi, damn it. <laughs> Why not? It's fun. But they, you know, go to the shopping mall and they're trying on different clothes, and it's set to "Girls Want to Have Fun." Girl, just girls just want to have fun by Cindy Lauper. So again, eighties. Um, which is a really fun sequence, and then the uh, the mutant zombies, whatever you want to call them, show up and ruin the party. Uh, again, they're shooting, blowing up cars with Mac tens. They're going out to the desert, blowing up these buildings and saving kids and fighting zombies and, um, you know, all the good stuff in this. It's just nothing but good stuff in this movie. Um, you know, it's a very minimal cast, but that's the idea of the film. So Catherine Mary Stewart. Be, I'm going to be honest, because of this movie, and that's her, like, that's just a shot from the film instead of just the artwork. I had a huge crush when I was a kid on Catherine Mary Stewart, primarily because of this movie, also Last Starfighter. Um, she still looks amazing. You know, if you look up any recent pictures of her, she still looks pretty much the same. But I had a huge crush on her because of this movie, because she is a badass. And all this bullshit in more recent years, about there's no strong female characters. Um, did you not watch this movie? Uh, 1984, you got two strong female characters. They're blowing shit up. I mean, they're killing zombies. What's not to love? Um, but yeah, I had a huge crush on Catherine Mary Stewart as a kid. And she does great. She is definitely leading lady material. Now, she did have a little bit of a career. I don't know. Um, if it was a personal choice or just dickhead Hollywood people or what have you. But uh, she was in, like I said, the same year she was also in Last Starfighter as the lead in that. Um, she worked with Charles Bronson in one of his last movies, The Sea Wolf. Um, and she did have a pretty good run. She she was pretty recognizable in, in for a while in some stuff. And I believe... One of the reasons she did get married and have a family, so that kind of took her away from things. But um, one of the more underrated 80s ladies in my... That's what I should do a series. 80s ladies that talk about all these uh, beautiful, strong women that they had in the 80s that apparently people forgot about. But she's great. Uh, you know, Kelly Maroney does great as well as the little sister. Even though... Um, she looks really young, but I think she might have been an adult by the time they did this, or maybe like 17, 18. Because um, she does look younger than she is. Even now, I mean, she still looks good as well. She does look younger than she is. She's probably pushing 60 at this point. Uh, same way, I don't know if Catherine Mary Stewart is 60 yet, but she's getting there. Um, but they did fine. Both of them did fine. Their chemistry was really good. They acted like sisters. You believe that they were sisters in the film. And I believe they're still good friends today. Like, I know they do conventions and such. Uh, they're actually both interviewed on here, which is nice. Now, the only thing is, I wish there was an interview with Robert Beltran. I guess either they didn't ask him or it was too much money or he was busy. I don't know. But I would love if they would have got him interviewed on here. Because he's done interviews before. So I don't know why he couldn't do it for this or maybe he didn't want to talk about it. I don't know because he's on the Lone Wolf McQuaid Blu-ray that came out last year um, again maybe it was busy or what have you but again they do fine um, you know Robert or uh, Kelly Maroney and Math or Catherine Mary Stewart I cannot talk uh, they do fine again their chemistry is really good you believe that they're sisters you believe that it's the end of the world, and they're the two ladies left, and they have to figure out what the hell's going on. And their performances are really strong. I really enjoy it. Robert Beltran does great. He does get uh, some solo scenes, but most of his stuff is with the ladies. All three of them have chemistry together. You believe that they are these characters, which is something you don't have in movies today. Um, 
and all three of them are very fun. Uh, Jeffrey Lewis has a small part in this. He is one of the villains that's slowly becoming a zombie. Um, and then by the end of the movie, he is a zombie. So it is always, you know, rest in peace, Jeffrey Lewis. Always enjoyed his work as an actor. Um, whether it was in this movie or Double Impact with Van Damme or the various movies he did with Clint Eastwood, so on and so forth, Tango and Cash, uh, so on and so forth. Always enjoyed Jeffrey Lewis as an actor. He was very capable, very reliable. Um, even if the movie wasn't good, he was good in it, but you know, I do miss him, uh, miss his work. Um, Mary Warnoff is in this. She was in a lot of these type of movies. She is one of the other scientists, but she has a conscience. Um, you know, she's trying to figure out what, or what are we going to do and, and how are we going to move forward and not kill everybody and turn everybody into a zombie and all that stuff. So she actually has a heart, which is nice. And, um, you know, her last scene is pretty cool where she kind of goes out with a bang. You know, if, you, if you've seen the movie, you know what I mean. Um, the makeup is awesome. Uh, David Miller, who actually the same year not only worked on this, but Terminator and Nightmare on Elm Street, he did all the makeup for the zombies, which was really cool and underrated. David Miller doesn't get the credit that he deserves, but uh, one of the unsung heroes of the makeup world, in my opinion. But, you know, he did a really good job with the, now, with the makeup. Now, the zombies are a little bit different. They're not... Uh, like they actually talk and they can run and they can move uh, before 28 days later did it. Uh, and if I have a review 28 days later, don't, don't get me wrong guys. I won't plagiarize my review. Like some certain YouTubers see what I did there. Um, I've actually never seen 28 days later, maybe one day, but the zombies actually had a little bit more to do in this one than just, you know, brains, which don't get me wrong. I love those type of movies. I love Dawn of the Dead. I love Day of the Dead. That's the classic zombies. But it was cool that they did something different in this one with the zombies. So I can't get mad at that. And the fact that they talked it, because this guy, this is the first zombie we see. He's trying to get Catherine Mary Stewart. And he's like, come here. And I thought that was pretty cool how they wanted to make something unique for this film. Um, you know, very good stuff. and. The big scene that everybody remembers is the mall scene. They go into the mall. They think no one's there. They're trying on all these different clothes, and they're blasting girls just want to have fun. Again, pure 80s, but that's how we like it. That's how I like it, at least. And there's a gang of guys that used to work there that had taken over the mall, and they've become zombies. And the leader is just a boatload of fun. He's just batshit insane. He is off the wall. He has the best line in the movie where he kills one of his own guys and Catherine Mary Stewart says, you're crazy. He goes, I'm not crazy. I just don't give a fuck. Which again, the best line in the film, because this is, it's PG 13. This is when PG 13 meant something back then you could get away with having a couple of fucks in your PG 13 film. There's another film that I will review later this month. That is PG 13 came out a year later and one of the best lines in the movie is when the lead girl says fuck off in a very funny way um but we'll get to that when we get to that and then Robert Beltran or uh, the the government people show up and and save them but yeah but that is the, the one scene that everybody remembers and that was when I would watch this as a kid that was always the one scene I look forward to number 1 the music is perfect number 2 the crazy guy, I always look forward to seeing him and, you know, killing his own people and the lines that he had and everything. It's just classic. The makeup is really good, but very, very good stuff. So, and then the other thing that was really cool, I, I almost forgot to mention this, this kind of piggy, I don't know if they did this intentionally because I think this came out first, but it kind of piggybacks off Last Starfighter because Catherine Mary Stewart's character she works at a movie theater, which is really cool, and she is obsessed with one of the video games in there to where she wants to have all the high scores. And, of course, Last Starfighter has to deal with video games. So, again, I don't know if they did that on purpose or not, but I just find it really cool that Catherine Mary Stewart was in two movies the same year that dealt with video games. And there's one person that 
beats her score. And then the joke at the end of the movie is this dude is one of the last people on earth. He shows up, him and Kelly Maroney, I guess they're going to go out on a date, and his license plate is the initials that he had in the video game. So very cool stuff. Now, I don't know if the soundtrack is commercially available. I've seen some bootleg ones online, like downloads and such, but I would love to know. I, that, I don't know. Um, if uh, there is a official soundtrack of this, because I would love to get it especially on vinyl. So I have to look that up. That I should have did that before the video, but oh well. Um, but at the end of the day, Night of the Comet is a classic. I absolutely love this movie. If you've never seen this, do yourself a favor and check this out. Especially if you like 80s horror, this is one you need to see. And pick up this Blu-ray. Hopefully you can get it with the slipcover for a decent price. It's just got amazing artwork on here. Um, yeah, uh, that there's the initials right there. Uh, R E G is uh, Regina, which is um, Catherine Mary Stewart's character, and then D M K is uh, the guy that beat her. But he is you find out who he is at the end of the film. I just now noticed that. See, I'm noticing all kinds of shit in this. Um, and then yeah, Shannon Farrell, she plays the evil stepmother. She was also in Lone Wolf McQuaid with Robert Beltran. So there you go. There's the Chuck Norris connection right there. Um, it was the 80s after all, but oh well. So anyway, guys, I hope that you enjoyed my review of Night of the Comet. Um, I'm not, what I'm going to do is the in-between movies, I'm not really going to say what those are. I'm going to kind of keep those a surprise for you guys, which I hope is okay. Um, so definitely going to knock out, uh, two more reviews and then we'll get back into, I'll, I'll knock out the paid request. So that's what I'll do. I'll do like. The paid requests, and then three reviews in between, and then next paid request. So that's how we're going to do it. Um, because the next one that he wanted me to do, or Leon wanted me to do, was Alligator. That's only two movies, but I'll still do like three, and then those two, and then three more, and then the next one. Because the other one, the other franchise he wanted me to review is Lake Placid, and that's like five movies. So yeah, so we'll have some fun there. But anyway, guys. Um, enjoy your, enjoy the rest of your weekend. It is Saturday when you see this, enjoy the rest of your weekend. I will be streaming tonight. So I'll see you guys then and take care. We'll talk soon. Later.